Okay, now I want to see a bit about a dual mesh option. So if I use a cube, for example, and I add a subdivision surface in order to increase the subdivisions, if I press dual mesh now, I get a weird result. The thing is that if the dual mesh is working on the original mesh, not on the result of the subdivision surface. So I have to undo that operation, apply my subdivision surface, like in this case, and press dual mesh. Now this is the result that I am expecting. Sometimes with very regular grid, you can see some strange patterns, but if you tweak with those parameters, for example, beauty, or no, it doesn't change actually. You can flip the direction because it basically starts from a triangulation of the quads. So the direction in which a quad is split in triangles affects the final result. Okay. Now assume that we want to work with that dual mesh. Let's move here. If I want to create a component on that dual mesh, I will I have to think of at those faces like something that must be tessellated in that way. Let me use the spoke function. Okay, something like that. So my component will be this triangle, not the whole face. So in order to do that, I have to think with something that is more simple. For example, a plane and I can split a couple of loops and looking in from the top view what happens in this direction it's going to the center of my polygon that will be approximately here and what I have on the bottom part will be the external side of my polygon so it will be the edge of my polygon just for give a look Imagine that we want to push downwards that part that we will be probably close to the corner, to the center of my polygon. I have to use in this case fan tessellation mode and uh, probably just the scale, so 0.02. Okay, and this is my result. And as I am expecting, the part that is going inside is close to the center of my polygon because in my component it's aligned to the top looking from the, in the top in the top art of view it's what i have here for example if i reduce that area and i make something like that so this part is smaller is small ramp here and I refresh my result, I will get smaller holes. If, for example, I want to create something that is interlocked, interconnect with the other part, I will probably have to do something a bit different because I want, for example, allow also the creation of some holes inside. But as you can see, if I just move that part here, supposing that I will get a hole on that part, in, on that part, if I refresh it, it just rescale automatically, fitting the, the sides of my component. So in this case, what I have to do is to make something a bit different. I have to create a plane, subdivide in four small planes remove those faces and keep only the face that use the space that goes from 0, 0, 0, that vertex here, to 1 along the x-axis and 1 along the y-axis. And this is 1, 1. So what happened inside here will be mapped automatically inside the triangle of my polygon. So now, for example, if I move this a bit downwards along the Y, that makes 0 0.8. Now, okay, let's delete that one. Now, if I make a tessellation of that, tessellate, 
and I, I have fan but I have also to set component x y that are th those direction that my default are adaptive so I change accordingly to the size of my component in this case I have to use constant and this is my result and now I'm able to get holes inside now imagine that we want to create something a bit more complex I can for example add a couple of cuts here one here okay and uh, I want to keep those edges and delete all the others okay so this one will be connected to that one and I want to set the Z a bit upward 0.1 I want to create a copy of that a point two minus and I want to connect with that okay the normal are, are opposite so I want to make to flip that normal here okay now I should be able to have the connection between those elements with the neighbors and also connection with itself rotated so what I have to check each time that I do something more complex is to check if I have connection in that direction so if the left part match perfectly the left, the left part or I have to check if rotating I have the alignment of the element here so I have the connection here so it should work so if I create now tessellation tessellate fan component XY okay that's it merge this is my result okay let's subdivide a bit maybe we have to increase the scale because I set it really, really small before so in the settings set 0.2 okay now I'm able to see this weaving effect and let's use a solidify and give thickness to that guy now we're subdivision surface if we want to see a bit smoother and now I created this this more complex shape if you want to see how big are the single the individual elements we can select one and press ctrl l for select everything that is connected to that one like this okay Imagine now that we want to create a morphing effect of that component, that component, sorry, along that base mesh following uh, some vertex group. So remove that one. Okay, we need, for example, to create a group that change accordingly to an attractor point. My attractor point can be a small icosphere. I can set very low resolution don't need all those vertices i can make it smaller moving uh, more or less here now i have to select my base mesh and create a vertex group because by default we don't have any so i want to create a new group and assign all the vertices so select everything with the a key all the vertices to that group assign okay now using the vertex weight proximity I'm able to select my attractor object my group and here for distance instead of using object I need to use geometry and in this case I can use vertex actually we will not see it, so much difference um, I'm going to weight paint okay see that it's changing a bit here 
If I change that parameter, okay, now I see my gradient. Perfect. Okay. If you want to make more, you can delete only edges and faces, so I have those vertices. And my object can be here, created here. And as you can see, you can also work with more attractors. But yes, maybe in this case it will be more difficult to see the final result, so make it smaller. Okay. And again. Yeah, you see that the values are really different because these values uh, are referred to the scale of the, of the object. So this object has a different scale, so these values are not really the length, the distance between the object. But it's okay. Okay, I have my vertex group here, and that's a good. So if I make settings, I can map the vertex group now on that object. So if I do it again, and then go to weight paint. Oh, because I have to use the modifiers. So settings, use modifiers, because this vertex group is defined by the modifier. Okay. Okay, and now I see that I'm able to see the same group on the generated object. So we can also use that group here if we want to use for some reason. For example, as you can see, we can use a vertex group for changing the thickness. So I can decide to use my group here for having different thicknesses. So the blue part is very thin, while the red one is really thick. And you can in some way change those effects. So this is the most thick, this is the more thin. But it's not that the case. So let's 0 0.05, no, a bit more, 0 0.01. Okay, perfect. Now I want to change my component in order to allow this transition between one state and another. So here we have one and zero here. So I have to use my components shape keys, shape keys, and I need to create at first the first one. That will be the basis, the unaltered state. So it will be my zero value, what we I, I get on the blue area here. And um, I need to add a new one the key one in this case you can rename it of course and now in edit mode if we select the key one that by default is there it's already selected if you go to edit mode we are able to change the aspect of the vertices that we have defined it's important that working with shape keys you do not add too many geometries otherwise you will get some weird effect because here he stored the information before the modification so just limit to change to move some vertices so now i can for example make this part thicker as x and increase it without going over this grid and i can also do the same here so i can make it thicker it's important that everything happens symmetrically so this is the reason why i selected both together Okay, now if I change that one, okay, it works. Now if I change the settings of my object and I activate use shape keys,
Okay, I see now that the red part is more thick while the other is thinner. And that's it.